Great. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, my, my name is Jody Ears, and I'm a relationship manager in the middle market and mid-corporate space with Fifth Third Bank. Um, Fifth Third Bank is a bank that is as long on its innovation as it is on its history. Since 1858, we've been helping individuals, families, businesses, and communities grow through smart financial services um, that improve lives. Now, from a leading technology standpoint, did you know that Fifth Third pioneered Genie? Who's Genie? Anybody know? Genie was the first online shared ATM network in the U.S., hosting its first live customer transaction in 1977. Later on, Fifth Third created and built Fifth Third Merchant Services. Um, since then, it's been sold to Vantiv WorldPay and is now rebranded once it's sold to FIS, um, to FIS WorldPay. And in the past year, Fifth Third has announced the acquisition of two digital finance companies, Provide and Dividend Financial. Um, these not only complement our strategy in small business and solar energy, but they also um, help us to expand our digital capabilities. So Charlotte is, is home to one of our larger hubs. We're based in Cincinnati, um, have a hub in Chicago, large hub in Chicago, large hub here, um, where we focus on four main businesses, our commercial bank, our commercial banking, our branch banking, you've probably seen more and more pop up around Charlotte, uh, the Charlotte area, consumer lending, and then asset management. So if you all need help um, advancing your business or just using somebody as a sounding board, please reach out to any of us. Um, with that, um, I'd like to introduce the first company. Algo Driven is a B2B SaaS company that helps car dealerships value and acquire used car inventory. Take it away. Thanks, Jody. So, I'd like to kick off with a short story. Before I was doing this startup, I was working in Dubai where I was the national used car manager for BMW. Uh, and we had a target of selling 2,000 used BMWs a year. And of course, to do this, we had to buy 2,000 used BMWs a year to sell them. So we employed four purchasers, and their job was to buy these cars from trade-ins, from other dealerships, or from auction houses. And I'd commonly say to these four purchasers, how much do you think this car's worth? And more often than not, the four purchasers would give me five different prices. And I'd say to them, fine, explain to me why this car's worth, why you think it's worth $110,000 and you think it's worth $130,000. And normally, the reasons that I would get would be things like, I love the color and the wheels of this car, or, you know, my brother's cousin's sister sold one recently for this price, so based on that, this one must be worth this. And I realized, you know, a lot of the time it was emotion and luck rather than data and analytics, which were driving the purchasing decisions and ultimately the profit of this whole dealership. And so at Algo Driven, we help car dealerships consistently and profitably acquire used car stock through our SaaS platform that helps them evaluate used cars and acquire them from consumers or other car dealerships. Over 700 car dealerships in 14 different countries use our software every day to value used cars. Our customers represent every major automotive brand, from Mercedes-Benz to BMW and even Tesla. These clients, they're valuing over $10 billion worth of used cars every year on our platform. We're currently at a US $3 million ARR run rate, and we've got best-in-class SaaS metrics, like 132% net revenue retention and a 0.9 burn multiple. That means for every dollar of venture capital that we've raised, we've generated a dollar 10 of recurring revenue, meaning we're extremely capital efficient. Now that we've built this network of dealers that love using our SaaS platform, we're now rolling out our B2B, dealer-to-dealer, -dealer, used car marketplace to allow the dealers on our platform to sell cars between them. That will allow us to not only monetize with the SaaS revenue that we already do, but it will also allow us to charge transaction fees and in the future roll out B2B payments and B2B trade finance. The average car dealership's currently paying $15,000 a month to use our SaaS platform. We've already seen with our launch dealers who are on our marketplace that this ACV and lifetime value is growing exponentially. Globally, one and a half trillion dollars of used cars are sold every year, and over half of those are sold by car dealers. In the markets that we currently operate in, 
Australia, the Middle East, and next year when we launch in the United States. Based on our current market penetration rates, we think that we've got an obtainable market of a billion dollars. The things that our clients love about our software is the depth of our proprietary vehicle and pricing data, the fact that we integrate into all their existing ERP and CRM systems. We've onboarded a fantastic network of dealerships already on the platform, and we have a first mover advantage as we roll out our B2B marketplace. My name's Glenn, and my co-founder, Jaron, he comes from a family that's owned car dealerships for generations. And like me, he understands this problem from top to bottom. We're raising a $3 million Series A extension. You'll be joining world-class investors who are already invested in algo-driven, such as social capital, automotive ventures, and 500 startups. These funds will be used over the next 12 to 18 months to expand the network of dealers on our SaaS platform, both in the existing markets and new markets like the United States, and then convert these SaaS users into our marketplace. So come join us as we help car dealers correctly value used cars. Thank you. That was terrific. Thanks so much. Um, now to introduce the next company, Jaunton. Jaunton is a SaaS company that enables insurance companies to embed insurance into third parties such as Grubhub and point of sale software. The stage is yours. Thank you. All right, thanks for having me, everyone. Rain Takahashi, founder of Jaunton, and we enable embedded insurance as an add-on. So, as a quick summary, we have product market fit, we have a proven growth model and a go-to-market strategy, we have early and scaling MRR, and we are also cannabis industry ready. So, hopefully this is enough to keep your attention for another four minutes and 30 seconds. So just so we're on the same page, embedded insurance is insurance that's sold alongside a third-party product, service, or process, and I assure you that you've experienced it yourself before. Every time you go to buy a flight ticket, you always get offered travel insurance as part of the purchase path. This is a perfect example of embedded insurance. So what's the problem that we're trying to solve? Well, low premium insurance products are the thorn in the side of insurance companies. They're very hard to distribute. Reason being, they're not prioritized by brokers and agents. Brokers and agents are paid on commission, so why would they? Direct-to-consumer is very expensive in the insurance industry, so it's very hard to distribute direct-to-consumer low premium insurance uh, products. So what ends up happening is billions of dollars in lost opportunities for the insurance companies because they can't efficiently distribute uh, low premium insurance products. So the solution is embedded insurance where an insurance company can piggyback off of third party products and processes, effectively reducing the distribution cost by over 90%. Also reduces the marketing costs to zero because once it's embedded into a third party, the third party does all the work for you. So it results in three to five times additional margins with, for the exact same product the insurance companies are already trying to sell. So we start to ask ourselves, where else can we do this? Where else can we be successful? And we landed on special event insurance. Special event insurance uh, is insurance that you take out on, say, your wedding day to cover you for any liabilities that might occur. We're embedded right into the venue's rental process. So as part of the rental agreement, you can get insurance uh, as quickly as clicking a button. We do the full quote bind and issue, meaning we do not rely on third party software. We take care of everything. We have no code, low code, and full API embedding options, meaning the tech stack of our channel partners does not matter. We can embed into virtually any channel partner. So as I hinted at earlier, we are live. Uh, we, in 2021, we did 270K in premium. This year, we're going to end up at 1.5 or more uh, with 10,000 policies processed. And we're already onboarding 10,000 venues across the US who's going to make our insurance mandatory for all the renters. Best of all, venues do not charge us anything, and all our growth so far has been fully organic. Revenue model is pretty straightforward. Setup fee plus a transaction fee. We do not take any underwriting risk. We are the software that powers it for the insurance companies who obviously take the risk. As for unit economics, the average policy price right now is $300 per uh, policy, event policy. We anticipate each venue to send us an average of just two policies a month or 24 a year. At 10,000 venues, that's $72 million in premium. 
However, we believe the serviceable attainable market for us in the U.S. is 150,000 venues, putting us at a billion dollars per year in premium. And that's with one insurance product. From there, we're going to expand within the insurance industry into accident, health, cannabis, cannabis events. That will be going live within the next few weeks. But just so you don't think we're a one-trick pony, we are actually in other markets as well. We're live with health benefits. That's contributing to MR. We actually just closed uh, senior assisted living. So that will be another embedded product that will go into uh, senior assisted living homes and their rental process. So when you start adding up all these opportunities, it becomes a $5 billion per year premium opportunity for us, which makes us a medium-sized insurance company in the U.S. So we're raising $3 million seed round to grow. Uh, we do not need any of this money for tech. We do not need any of this money to figure out our go-to-market. We've already figured out all that out. This is all to, uh, to help us grow our MRR. So the big question is why now? I've kind of hinted at this. We've grown organically the last uh, 18 months. We're at 25K MR right now. Uh, by the end of the year, we'll be at 30K. And then in Q1, without any funding, we will probably be at 50K MR. And so that's uh, why we're here, is we want to add gasoline to the fire to help us grow even further. So to summarize, uh, yeah, we have scaling MRR, we have initial product market fit, proven growth model, and uh, we will be in the cannabis industry within the next few weeks. Thank you. Great, thanks so much. Um, the next company I'd like to introduce is Insured Nomads. They are the first insure tech in global health, security, and safety for the traveler, expat, and remote worker, pairing insurance with advanced tech-enabled services. I'll turn it over to you. Hi, everyone. It is a pleasure to introduce Insured Nomads to you today. You know, in this world where people are free to work anywhere, I've had so many people at this conference even come to me saying, oh, I'm moving to X country, or I'm planning to go live across Europe for the next year or so. We started three years ago in this journey in a very profitable segment of insurance that has been controlled by the legacy players. You know, the, the demand we saw was from consumers, but now that the pandemic has come and hopefully passing us by, we've seen that the B2B segment is allowing work from anywhere and they are demanding PEOs, global EORs are asking for the solution. The brokers are ecstatic about us and our, our team is, uh, they're built of thought leaders in this industry. Coming from the giants that have built the, up this product over the last 30 years, but it isn't a, um, really tech-driven segment of insurance. It is a PDF attached to an email or a packet in the mail where all of us are used to controlling things in our apps. You know, the workforce is distributed and we've solved the compliance aspects of making sure that we can run multinational companies. But benefits are need to be updated. Uh, so what we've done is build out short-term or travel insurance, and global health insurance for those who are living the cross-border lifestyle. We've made it easy to use with our MasterCard connection uh, so that the pay and chase is eliminated in the claims process. Uh, the travel tech, our ecosystem within our native apps that are live is unsurpassed with the AI, ML, and global positioning so that you can hit our emergency response button and get assistance wherever you are in the world. Uh, it is unbelievably easy the way we've built it. So this is ready, uh, in, embedded into uh, the ecosystems as you just heard from the jaunted example. Uh, embedded is, is the logical way for this, but most in the global health insurance space don't have the capabilities. They don't have APIs ready and they don't have the no code. If, API really is an obstacle. Even if you have it, your partners can't implement it. So our model is we're sold B2B primarily, B2B to C, through brokers, distribution partners, travel and hospitality, and uh, through apps that have partnered with us as well. Uh, so it's insurance for travel, global health, Device protection, because if you're living, spending time in another country, you drop your phone, that's the last thing you want to do is call Verizon and they say, mail it to the local assurance store. 
So we can drop those funds on our digital MasterCard that's in your Apple wallet. You get your screen replaced and keep going. Um, but you're getting a whole lot more because how many of you have actually used your policy when you've had travel insurance? Utilization is low and profit is high. But with us, you get a 12-month membership of non-insured services, including unlimited mental health in languages around the world. You're getting travel alerts. Through our native apps, you're, you, know, you have that emergency response. You have so much more and uh, lounge access, et cetera. So our go-to-market, as I mentioned, is, is primarily B2B. We're distributed by the, the names you love and trust in the, in the con, uh, business segment from Willis Towers Watson, One Digital, um, and others around outside the US. And um, then a, a small direct-to-consumer segment. That is taking off. Last week, a study came out, or actually two weeks ago, and we had to update this number, that the travel insurance segment alone is predicted to be 99 billion. And that's a segment where the average purchase price is about $300. But yet, global health is a $10,000 a year annual premium. So that's a, that's a booming. We've had 1.4 million in sales. We're raising 4 million now. 1.3 of that is, is raised. And uh, that's at a you know, 16 to 20 pre-money valuation. I'd love to answer questions for you as I'll be here this afternoon, and I'm in the CrowdWorks platform, so reach out. Let's get on a call and discuss this further. Thank you. Great. Thanks so much. Um, the next company is 21 Finance. Uh, they make investing in digital assets as easy as online shopping. So I will turn it over to you to tell us how easy it is. Hello, everyone. My name is Max Heinzler. I'm the founder and CEO of 21st Finance. Uh, as you might hear from my accent, um, I'm from a, the German-speaking region, so I come from Europe over here to actually present to you why uh, are we talking about the revolution of capital markets in the 21st century. Maybe close your eyes and imagine what, it, uh, what if every person and institution had access to all assets in real time. What would that world look like? Opening a world of assets worth over 1,500 trillion for over 8 billion people on this planet. And all of that in one place. A new digital exchange. Creating a new era for capital markets. On the left hand side you see an image of what stock markets look like in today's time. Investing is still cumbersome. Stock exchanges have a high level of intermediation. And so legacy constraints are, are leading us to uh, cost inefficiency yeah, as opposed to what we are seeing in DeFi. Yeah, with uh, disintermediation, um, if we look at distributed ledger technology, then we see a lot of use cases. And also, all of you will have heard about the issues that come with CFI, FTX is all over the news. Yeah? Some of the examples that you see here are proven use cases, but we all know it's missing regulation. And this is where the DLT regulation comes in. And sorry to tell you, un un unlike um, with other technologies that we've seen in the past, the revolution is actually this time not being driven here from the US but it's actually happening in Europe. And why is that? Well, the DLT pilot regime is actually allowing for trading and settlement, but not only trading and settlement, everything that a stock exchange normally has in order to function in terms of a market infrastructure out of one single entity. So forget about clearing, because clearing is not necessary anymore. In a world where matching and settlement takes place atomically, peer-to-peer, -peer, where each of us here in this room, but also institutions, can directly access the exchange. Where each and every one of us, or also institutions, can tell, take self-custody, can also use custodial services, 
but can self-custody, where there is no central counterparty. Why? Because there is no CSD. 24-7 trading, 365 days a year. What you can see, unfortunately, on the slide is an arrow going up. And what it's trying to tell you is we are outpacing competition. Some of the names that you see on the slide are big names. Why do we have a competitive advantage? Because we don't have legacy constraints. We are, we are developing a market infrastructure that is customer-centric with a state of an art on a state of an art technology, public permissionless, to actually drive the level of disintermediation and disrupt it to the maximum. We are not only in a pole position in Europe because we are the first to actually be in conversations and dialogues with the European Securities Market Authority, with the European Central Bank, or with the German Federal Reserve Bank. We, are also, we also have a head start because the people that we work with, they were the first in Europe to actually develop a multilateral trading facility on blockchain for derivatives. And if we look at the market, if we look at only one asset class, equities, you look at the trading volume in Europe last year, you come to understand that we're talking about 10.7 trillion for equities alone. This regulation that I'm talking about, it covers for several products, not only equities, also for debt products, fund products. And on such a small addressable market, take a look what the short-term revenue potential is. So we are up and running. Not only are we developing the first regulated decentralized exchange of the world, but we also have supporting products that are helping us lead to adoption yeah, for business clients to actually start entering digital asset issuance and distribution. We're growing, and this DLT exchange will actually be critical market infrastructure that will allow for a flourishing asset-backed token economy to happen. Why us? Well, I'm not going to go into too much detail because I'm running out of time, but as you can see here, the team that we've put together is people that have worked for the largest institutions in the world and we're backed by some fantastic institutions. We've raised already over 12 million and we are currently raising for our Series A. If you want to be part of this revolution, I look forward to talking to you. Thank you for your time and thank you for having us. So nice, right? Yep. Got the pronunciation correct? You it's the world's it. first P2P decentralized free market blockchain platform. Yep. Turn it over. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Michael, and I am the CEO of NICE. That stands for Global Network Encryption Investment Security Service, as you can see there. And we are the world's first decentralized peer-to-peer -peer blockchain platform. Now, what that means, if I can get this clicker to work, okay. Uh, you can create, store, transact any crypto coins on our platform that can represent anything from gold to wine. You can use smart contracts to regulate all the different business transactions that you would have and collateralize assets that creates the first trustless economy that economists have been trying to make for decades. The Lightning and Raiden network allows free instant transactions that competes with Visa and MasterCard for 2 to 5%, and that also includes any Ethereum tokens. So you can also do those free transactions for gold, fiat currencies, stocks, whatever. And then our registry for NFTs allows you to register anything from a business to a car to a house to even Elon Musk's spaceships if he wants. And our smart contract system that we'll have to regulate the financial transactions will eventually include loans, derivatives, insurance, and distributed autonomous organizations. 
So that's a lot to be said there, but basically what we are is we're a free decentralized banking platform that is integrating all the aspects of Wall Street onto the blockchain using Bitcoin and Ethereum's blockchain specifically. Why now? So the market is ripe for this, as we can tell through FTX, that centralized exchanges aren't the best. DeFi is the way to go. Retail investors are looking for the DeFi platforms that they can trust so that they can actually have self-custody of their own assets and don't have to trust a centralized exchange. On top of that, the private individual market will be the forefront of this because they're the ones that are the most risk averse there and or risk accepting, I mean, and they'll drive the innovation with the banks and everything catching up. The target customer is basically anybody who needs a crypto online exchange or platform, and a majority of our customers already are millennials. And our business model, again, is to digitize any real-world asset onto the blockchain so that you can trade everything. You can conduct micro and macro transactions of any size or volume. There are no fees in instant transactions with the Lightning and Raiden network. Our secured contracts collateralize digital assets, and that's where we get the trustless economy from. And the registration of any NFT to trade anything you want, literally anything. Our long-term version our vision is uh, the complete advanced free market uh, smart contract system, which would include titles, registrations, credit systems, loans, derivatives, and insurance. Uh, the creation of distributed autonomous organizations, which are basically businesses that are fully regulated by the blockchain itself. And nice ATMs that transact crypto to gold, so you get that real world aspect of real money with the digital money all at the same time. Our competition is Binance, Uniswap, and OX Exchange. Binance is uh, the biggest crypto exchange that's centralized. Uniswap is decentralized, and it's the biggest decentralized one. And OX makes simple smart contracts. We do all of this plus much more and in an easier to use platform. The milestones, we've basically completed the beta, the white paper's completed, we've already incorporated in the British Virgin Islands there. The Lightning Network's completed, Raiden Network's almost completed. The nice commercial launch is planned for mid-year 2023. We have the most advanced ERC-20 tokens currently, and we're KYC, KYC AML compliant with Basis ID. And to the right here, you can see what we're aiming for. You can see centralized systems, decentralized and distributed. We're not only trying to be decentralized, we're trying to be distributed because that allows for the greatest peer-to-peer -peer markets that are unhindered by any centralized authority. Our marketing plan is basically to use social media and email marketing because we are an online platform. Online marketing is by far the easiest way we can reach our targeted audience. The technological advancements we have are the, we're the first trustless economy, meaning all financial transactions and business can be regulated by the blockchain, and you just need to trust our code, which would replace financial institutions and a lot of lawyers. Our first uh, decentralized peer-to-peer -peer marketplace that anyone can access for free with low transaction fees and marketplace fees. The first crypto platform to integrate both Lightning and soon here Raiden Network. The crypto exchange with some of the most trading pairs. We have over 2,400 trading pairs. And Nicecoin is the first crypto stock which pays dividends every Friday at 5 p.m. EST. And of course, our best asset is the team. These are eight of our team members, which can easily be doubled with the right financing. And our revenue model is a very simple 0.3% fee across the board for any marketplace transaction that you would have. The users would pay for the blockchain transactions when they take it off the Lightning and Raiden network to audit the network. But other than that, the Lightning and Raiden network makes all other transactions free. And we are seeking 2.5 million. Most of that would go towards exchange liquidity, but a lot of it would also go towards finishing development, finishing all legal work. We're already represented by Apple Buy, and the rest would go towards marketing. So with that, we are nice. We are reinventing the financial wheel and bringing universal blockchain banking, crypto asset tokenization, and fintech smart contracts to everyone with an internet connection. Thank you for your time.